Hello there, my very good friends. Andy here for What Culture Wrestling. And another public holiday in the UK means I'm the only person in the blooming office, which means you are being treated to another low rent, scruffy, rough around the edges news video here on a Monday. But listen, the stories to go over, I know you want to hear them. So let's run through them. Today we're going to talk all about the latest on Vince McMahon and his meddling in WWE. We are going to go over a report on an apparent WWE hiring freeze. After that, we will talk about one of AEW's missing wrestlers who's been gone for the best part of a year. And then we're going to talk about the return of Tessa Blanchard because we haven't spoken about her in about a year. So might as well do it again, I guess. Anyway, I'm Andy. I think I've already said that. This is the news. This is my last solo video. Pretty, pretty happy about that. But anyway, we're going to kick things off by talking about Vince McMahon. Obviously, it was a big week for him. Uh, showed up to Raw, tore the thing to pieces, rewrote batches of it. He was there in person. There were changes ongoing while he was on the air. There was morale dipping and everything was falling apart. And it felt like the wrestling world was imploding. Well, things were a little bit more normal at SmackDown this week, which is good to hear. Uh, a report coming through here from Fightful Select stating that Vince McMahon was not at SmackDown in person. It was in Portland, I believe. He was back on the East Coast. Uh, and that morale was significantly better as a result of this, understandably. Um, but a bunch of people in WWE are still taking a wait-and-see approach when it comes to Vince, who in the wake of all his raw meddling, that's definitely the right word for it, uh, was reported to pretty much be back in his old role, despite previously stating that he wouldn't be getting in the weeds creatively. Uh, now, PW Insider and Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, what on earth, had reported prior to SmackDown uh, that Vince wasn't going to be there, uh, but Meltzer stated that he did call in with some minor creative changes, um, clearly not ripping the whole thing up like he did with Raw, however. So I think that's quite interesting to consider. And you know, if Vince has only made minor changes to SmackDown and he made major changes to Raw, that might explain why Raw was a pile of trash and SmackDown was actually pretty decent. So it all adds up when you put it together. But yeah, it's been a turbulent week um, for WWE in general with the way WrestleMania second night ended and, and all of that stuff. And then Raw was not well received by the wider fan base despite 17 billion people watching it. Um, and then all the Vince stuff coming out. So obviously you hope going forward because the WWE product is immeasurably better without this man involved, you hope that maybe last week was just a one-off, but the way it was reported afterwards by Meltzer, by Fightful, by every outlet you can think of pretty much, suggests that that won't be the case. So we'll see what happens next with this dude. Uh, Raw was always Vince's baby, show-wise, so it does stand to reason that he'd maybe show a bit more interest in that show and tweak a few more things and be there in person than for SmackDown. But hey, I, I guess we'll have more stuff to cover on Tuesday morning. Uh, oh yeah, that's tomorrow morning. These holiday weekends screw with my brain, which isn't very good in the first place. But hey, there he is, old Paul. Uh, let's talk about WWE going on an apparent hiring freeze now. This is quite interesting. It's another report here from Fightful Select. Um, obviously, Triple H, when he came in as head of creative and chief content officer last July, hired a bunch of people, brought back a load of folk that had been fired under the previous regime and others. People like Bray Wyatt, Karrion Cross, loads and loads of folk came in. You know that. That was one of the talking points of summer last year. Um, now, however, talent within WWE have indicated that there's some kind of hiring freeze going on in the company. Nobody has been explicitly told that, it is stated here, but it is a term that has constantly been brought up recently in the company. Uh, now, Vince McMahon's return and the company's sale have been speculated as potential reasons for this, and Nick Aldis has been mentioned as somebody that Triple H was high on, and therefore presumably maybe kind of wanted to bring in uh, but then uh, the company uh, he was left out in the cold he was one of many people who was left out in the cold when Vince returned uh, Vince full on returned this last week of course but prior to that he returned to the board of directors as executive chairman in January so there you go uh, and a bunch of talent however have claimed that they've been contacted by WWE in 23 so there's interesting things going on here for sure now, WWE has not hired anyone for the main roster at all this year. Uh, none in 2023. Some talent have been told that it's hard to make things happen because of the impending sale of the company. Well, that impending sale of the company went through 
It was confirmed last week, Endeavour, of course, buying the company, all of that stuff, but it had been hanging in the balance for several months, pretty much since Vince came back. And some talent who were previously on WWE's radar have had no content with the company after showing initial interest, so all of that would add up. Yeah, I mean, it'll be very interesting to see Endeavour's approach to this, I think. Obviously, you don't want people to lose their jobs, but this is sometimes a thing that happens with company takeovers, in particular Endeavour. When they took over the UFC, they let go of some legacy talents like Randy Couture and, and other people who they showed a bit of a lack of sentimentality there and decided, hey, we don't want or need you, so off you go. Um, you worry that they might do the same thing here? From what I've read, Endeavour is a lot more business-like even than WWE and a lot more focused on the bottom line, which is quite mental to think about when you consider WWE over the past few years, but... Yeah, one to watch for sure, uh, and it yeah it does add up this one because they haven't brought anyone in for the main roster in a while. So there you go. Right, let's talk about the well. I, is there any point in even teasing it? It's Santana. You want an update on Santana? Yeah, let's let's talk about him. He's been gone from AEW for the best part of a year now, and Fightful Select note that he is still with AEW, however, and he's been paid through his current injury, which is obviously good. Uh, his contract expiry date has not been clarified with Fightful, however, he has intimated, Santana has, that it's in September. Obviously, because he's been injured, AEW could... They, they have the power to add time on due to that injury, so that is something that may well emerge. Now, uh... Santana's had a turbulent year, fell out reportedly with his long-term tag team partner and friend, of course, Ortiz, uh, which was really sad because they've been teaming together for the longest time. They were a great tag team, hadn't accomplished everything, perhaps their talents warranted in AEW, uh, and then there were there's all these reports of them like not getting on anymore, and it's a shame when like a personal situation arises like that and a relationship dissolves. It's always a shame. And these things are deep-rooted, they're complex, we're not privy to them, we're not in that room, we don't know what happened. Uh, obviously, it would be nice if whatever occurred between them could be resolved and they could, you know, they could team again or whatever. But who knows? We don't know how deep these things go, so just wishing all the best for both men, really. And of course, Santana, shortly after those reports came out, he tore his bloody ACL, didn't he? In blood and guts last June. So that's a long-term injury. He's been out ever since. We're coming up on 10 months now, the poor guy. Uh, very talented man. Hope he's back in a wrestling ring soon, whether it's with AEW or anywhere else. Whatever makes him happy. That'd be nice. Uh, Tessa Blanchard. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, <laughs> she's come, kind of making a bit of a wrestling return here. So, Tessa was in Los Angeles over WrestleMania weekend at WrestleCon. She actually settled her differences, and this is according to PW Insider, with La Rosa Negra, who is, if you recall, the wrestler that she was accused of using racial slurs against uh, during a tour of Japan. And it was multiple uh, people who came forward with these accounts, the likes of Alison Kay and others. Um, that was in January 2020. It feels like, it feels really recent, but it was... Over three years ago that these these allegations and, and you know, talk of Tessa's, you know, ill-suited, racist behavior, bullying, all of that stuff, all those allegations came out. Um, now, she's being advertised for several weeks worth of wrestling dates, and this is from PW Insider again, in Canada this May. So... Tessa was actually let go within a few months of the, the allegations coming out. Um... Impact, she was Impact World Champion, of course, at the time, and they feared she was going to no-show an event during the global pandemic uh, while she was self-isolating in Mexico. The fear was that she wasn't going to come to a show. She was as World Champion, and she hadn't submitted some some tapes, some pre-recorded, requested videos that Impact had, had requested. These were the reports at the time, of course, surrounding this incident. Now, Tessa's only 27 years old, which is wild. Uh, she's been in wrestling for ages and ages. Uh, her last, she's wrestled a bunch of indie dates last year, nothing major, like smaller scale events, uh, but her last major show would have been an impact taping in March 2020. Uh, the company did push forward, despite the allegations that arose and, you know, the slurs, uh, they did push forward and make her world champion, like a day after that or whatever it was, it was very close. Um, now, obviously, it's not for me to sit here and go, hey, she is forbidden. Uh, not forbidden, forgiven or whatever, because I'm not the person who could be harmed or dehumanized by the awful terms that she is alleged to have used. So I can't sit here and go, yes, she should be allowed back. 
That's nonsense. That's not for me. But I am glad to hear that her and La Rosa Negra have at least had a conversation and seemingly come to some kind of understanding or whatever. Um, obviously, it doesn't erase what happened. And, you know, that, that so many people came forward with this talk uh, gives extra credence to it. It's not just one person or whatever. Uh, it was like a dozen folk uh, across social media within the wrestling business. So... Complicated case, Tessa Blanchard. She's going to be a complicated case until the day she leaves wrestling, really. Um, not really been active over the past few years. Seems to be doing this Canadian tour. Goodness knows where that's going to end up. But hey, that's our last story of the day. And uh, yeah, okay, sure. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for joining me again for this run of solo videos. It turns out when you send people to the US... They can't record in the studio here in the UK. It's wild. Uh, but yeah, it's been a hell of a run this past week. We've covered some major stories. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for like, sharing, and subscribing, and ringing the bell for notifications. That stuff really does help us out. So if you could do that, that'd be sensational. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. And you can follow me on Twitter at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Hoop 53 Hoop Ladin. Okay. Bye.